Welcome to the Midwest Dream Car Collection. Today we are going to be talking about the museum's 1924 Ford Model T touring car. The Ford Model T was introduced in the fall of 1908, and by the time production stopped in May of 1927, 15 million Model Ts had been produced. It can safely be said that the Model T was the most affordable, mass-produced car that put middle-class America on wheels. The Model T's engine is a simple and efficient 177 cubic inch 2.9 liter inline four-cylinder engine with a monoblock design, meaning all four cylinders were cast into a single block. This design was uncommon for the time when production on the Model T began in 1908, but was well suited for mass production. Some of the engine features that are on the Model T are detachable cylinder head. This design made it easier to access and service the engine, especially for valve jobs. Both the block and head were made of cast iron. Mechanical simplicity. The engine didn't have a fuel pump, so gravity fed the carburetor. The gas tank was located on the front seat, so the driver would have to remove the front seat cushion to have access to the fuel fill neck. The Model T engine generated 20 horsepower and allowed the car to reach top speeds of 40 to 45 miles per hour. The engine was also made to a planetary two-speed transmission, two forward speeds, high and low, and one reverse speed that we'll show you how it operates here in just a moment. On the front grill here, we just have a very simple water radiator cap that you unscrew to fill with coolant or water. Of course, our two electric headlights. Electric lights were available on Model T by 1924 and our hand crank down here, which we'll demonstrate here in just a moment, where we could hand start the Model T. To open the hood of each Model T, there are four spring-loaded clips, two on each side. There is a center hinge here, so you can open up one side or the other, or completely remove the hood altogether. We're gonna open up this side first, so we'll simply release both spring clips, and by gently lifting up and folding back, we now have access to this side of the engine. Here's where you'll notice the inline four engine. Here again, all cast iron. You'll notice the gasket on here. That's because the entire top head can be removed. Like we talked about, that made it very easy for doing valve jobs. The fuel comes from underneath the fuel tank, underneath the front seat. By gravity flow, come down through the fuel line to the single updraft carburetor. Here we have a choke control, which is accessible from on the dash panel. And by pulling that, we'll choke the engine which is sometimes needed during cold starts. The line that we see coming here is accessible from underneath the front dashboard. The driver can uh, turn that to allow a little bit of fuel to go into the carburetor once the car hasn't been started for a while to make it easier to start. Here we have the generator. This Model T is equipped with both a electric start and the original hand crank. Power to the spark plugs was through a magneto and uh, you will notice when we here in a moment we'll look underneath the dash there are four what they called trembler or buzz coils where power from the magneto would go up to these coils and transform from seven volts to about 20,000 volts to come to each of the four spark plugs. One of the things you always had to be careful with is if you're around these with any kind of a screwdriver or anything and nick that it would bite back it was it was pretty easy to to give you a zap. Let's go see what's on our side. So we'll close this, SAF. Resecure it. Here again, we'll release the four spring loaded locks. This device up here that you see mounted to the top is the horn for the car, and we'll sound it off here in just a moment. This is an aftermarket water pump. Model T's did not come with a water pump. After about the first 2,500, they, they worked on a thermosiphon. So if it didn't have a water pump, as the water heated up in the block, it would gravitate towards the top of the radiator, trickle down through and cool off and then re-enter. And that was worked fairly well for the Model T, but they did tend to overheat if they were used on a very hot day. Water pumps were available aftermarket. Most Ford Model T owners did decide to use them. Uh, because it did help keep the car cooler. They were not standard features on Model T, so much later models. Something else we'll notice underneath the engine bay is this rod coming down here. This center one is your steering column. These two bars here 
The far left one is your spark adjustment, and there's a control on the steering column. So when I lower or raise that, you'll see that twist that adjusts the timing on the car. The far right one is our throttle. We don't have a gas pedal on these cars, but there's a throttle control in the column. As I turn that, that will speed up or slow down the throttle. This 1924 Model T is known as a touring car, and you'll notice that it has three doors, not four, but three. Uh, two on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. Most Model Ts did not have a driver's side door. What well, looks like two doors, but the front door is non-existent because of the handbrake position would be right in the way where you'd want to enter the car. To open the doors, there is a simple release on all doors. And just this little lever here, just simply by toggling it back, will release, will release the lock to allow the door to be opened or closed. The dashboard on the Model T is overly simple. You'll see very few gauges and very few control knobs. One of the central controls that we notice is the key located in the center of the dash. This key will uh, go to either battery or magneto. So when we go to start the car, you typically would start on battery which is to the left. Now when I turn this key to the left, you're going to hear the trembler coils fire up, what they call the buzz coils. Let's try that out. This would now be where we could then start the car, either by pushing the electric start button on the floor or by hand cranking from the front. Once the car is started, they suggest you then flip it over to magneto to save your battery and then run off the magneto. Uh, to shut the car off, you flip it back to the central or the up and right position. The loss of notice immediately below the key is another toggle type switch. And this is for your headlights and simply by toggling this over will turn your headlights on. We also have an ampere gauge over here to let you know how your voltage is holding up. This pull knob here is your choke control so by pulling that out and holding it while you're turning the car over will choke the engine. We talked a little bit ago about the gas adjustment uh, control. That's up underneath here, and by twisting that, you can drop a little bit of gas into the uh, carburetor bowl to aid in the starting of the vehicle. So when you go to start the Model T, we will fully retard the spark, give a little bit of throttle, and then we will start the car. Once the car is running, we will need to come back in and adjust the timing and the throttle to smooth out the engine. On the lower uh, part of the steering column is a button. This is for our horn, and simply by pushing that, we get the famous Model T horn. In the Model T, there are three pedals on the floor. None of them are correlated to what pedals on a modern day vehicle are. And one of the first things that we'll notice is the far right pedal where you traditionally have a gas pedal or accelerator pedal on cars. And the Model T is your brake pedal. This isn't your traditional brake pedal and that you push it and it uh, tightens uh, discs or drum pads in a, in a conventional braking system. This is a transmission brake. So simply by depressing this with your right foot, we'll tighten a band around the transmission, which slows the transmission to give you some braking power, but not for sudden stops. Uh, the handbrake over here has several different functions. All the way back is for a mechanical brake to the rear wheels. This would be used more if you need a little bit more braking than you're getting from here but also if you want to hold the car in place on a hill or when you're starting. When this lever is all the way back, it also places the transmission in neutral. The middle pedal here is our reverse pedal. Simply by pushing that forward all the way to the floor will engage the car to go backwards. Um, the far left pedal here is referred to as a clutch pedal, but it's basically a two-speed transmission um, where the pedal is positioned now is neutral. Uh, so when we have the car running and we're ready to go forward, uh, we would release the handbrake and put it either into neutral here and push the pedal all the way to the floor and that will engage uh, low gear. If we want to speed the car up, we would need to release this lever all the way forward and let go of the pedal and the pedal comes all the way back as you noticed here and that puts the, gear, the car into high speed. Uh, by simply pushing the pedal into the middle point, We'll put the car back in a neutral if you're going to stop, or you can pull this lever back and it will automatically uh, pull that pedal back to neutral, as you can see there, uh, to help slow the car with the 
the transmission brake. So as you can see, driving the Model T is a little bit like learning how to dance. You have to figure this all out and how it correlates with each other. You have to figure out the balance between the three pedals on the floor, the throttle control over here to slow up and speed the car, and the timing adjustment down here to smooth out the timing. And constantly working between these two levers here, these three pedals down here, and the hand lever over here to drive the car or stop the Model T. All early cars were not electric start. Uh, Cadillac came out with electric start in 1912, and Model T adapted the electric starter in 1919, uh, made it an option for their cars. But if the Model T is equipped with electric starter, that's what you would see this button down here. Uh, by depressing that down with your foot, uh, that would activate the starter to be able to bypass the front hand crank on the Model T. Even though you had electric start on Model Ts, they also always had the hand crank as a backup accessory way to start the Model T. Well, let's start the Model T first by using the electric starter to uh, uh, see what it sounds like. To start a Model T using the hand crank, there are a couple things you want to be aware of. First is that uh, you want to make sure that your timing is all the way retarded, that your hand brake is pulled all the way back, engaging the rear brakes and also placing the Model T in neutral. So once the car starts, it doesn't run you over. And then that you're, you have just a little bit of a throttle adjustment. Uh, if the car was completely cold, if it had not been started recently, you might have to prime the car. To prime the car, you want to make sure that this ignition switch is completely in the off position. Then you'd come around front, and uh, uh, you can use either hand to, to prime it by pushing this in and just giving it a couple little cranks. That will get some gas up into to the cylinders. And then you can go back and uh, turn your key on to the battery. Make here again, make sure your timing is retarded and you have a little bit of throttle, then we'll come back out. We go to start the car for the actual time, you always want to use your left hand. And the reason for is if you used your right hand, it could backfire and break your arm or your wrist. So by using your left arm and you want to cup your thumb underneath it, and um, you sometimes want to hold on to the fender, and then we'll just, uh, you have to get till it catches, and then you'll we'll just give it a quick crank. A lot of people think you turn and turn and turn. No, you just give it a little bit of a yank and keep repeating that till it starts up. So let's go in here and turn our car on, the key on to battery. We're going to make sure that our timing is fully retarded. We have just a little bit of throttle. The handbrake is all the way back, meaning the brakes on and the car is in neutral. We'll come around, push in to engage the handle, cupping our hands and there we go. We'll come back around, adjust our timing and throttle. Switch from battery to magneto. Now we're running on magneto and we can adjust the timing, smooth it out, throttle. And we're ready to take off. That's it.